Hi, welcome back to a video. I am going to be making a calculator app on App Inventor 2. This is part one of the video. So you're gonna go up here and you are just gonna hit create apps. You cannot see it on the screen right now, but right above my mouse though is the create apps button. You are going to click that and log in. Once you log in, it's going to take you somewhere like this, but without all of these projects. You're going to hit the Start New Project button right up here. Then you are going to call it whatever you want. This is a calculator app. I'm going to call it Cow Cow Vid for Cow Cow Video. So you're just going to click OK and as you can see I have a space. You're going to have to get rid of that space and click OK. If your project already exists, is, that means you can't do that project. So I'm going to, you can simply fix it by adding a 2. And there we go. So now it's CalCalVid2 instead of just CalCalVid. So it should automatically open you up to something like this. I am working with a tablet. I'm going to switch that over to tablet size. And now you are going to switch your well we want something for the output of the calculator to read where the numbers are going to be showing up you're going to drag out a label as you can see it goes into the corner all you have to do to fix that is you are going to hit on screen one and you are going to change the horizontal arrangement to center then you are going to click back on the label one and we are going to change what it says. I'm going to change it to output because it technically is the output. So after I do that, I'm going to want to change it to make it a little bigger. You can just change the font size. I'm going to do it to 30.0. And as you can see, it adjusted. So I'm also going to click rename. So this will not rename the text. It will actually rename over here. So if you were going to go into blocks, it would show up over here. So that blocks is where we would be doing all the coding. You can change the name to output. It does not have to be output, but I'm going to be doing output. Now you are going to drag out a list view and you are going to change the height to five pixels because we don't want it this stick and you can change the width to fill parent. That will fill the devices screen in the width access. So now you're going to go to layout and table arrangement. This will allow you to not have to put it under. Because if I was going to click on user interface, I could drag so much things and it would automatically go under. So you're going to have to, so you would have to go to the layout option. Now you can just drag each button into here. But this is only a 2 by 2 space as you can see. To delete the buttons, all you have to do is hit the button that you want to delete and click delete. I'm going to do that for each one. So we are going to need to change how big we have this. In order to do that, you're going to click on your table arrangement and you're going to change the columns and the rows. Four by four. So this will allow us to place each button. So you're going to place each button in all of the slots just like this. Okay, I have just placed in every beta to change the text on these. If you scroll down under the properties, you'll see the text. I'm going to change this to button 1 and so on. But we are only going but we aren't going to be occupying all these buttons with the numbers. We're going to put this one with button 1, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one and this one and this one with all the different numbers. And so with this one for a zero button. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are going to be our operator buttons. So as clear button. So I'm going to do all of that. So as you can see, we, we have entered in each button. So we are going to need to add in all the operators. So this is going to be our clear equals division times minus and plus button. So I will see you when I do that. Okay, so now that we have done all of that, you know the buttons are different sizes and they are absolutely tiny. 
to uh, fix this problem, we are going to click on the button and you're going to see height and width. You're going to change this to the height and width you want. I'm going to do 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Make sure you click the OK button when you're done. So I'm going to do that for every key. So now that that is all done, as you can see, we have so many buttons. And so we have so many buttons. We're going to need to change this. In order to do that, you're going to click on the button that you want to change over here. And you're going to click rename. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do and you cannot do one because if you click OK, it has to start with a little. So I'm going to do B1 for button one. Same with button two, button three, button four, button five, button six, button seven, button eight, button nine, button ten, and all the other buttons. And I'm going to do plus, minus, times, division, equals, and clear. Okay, so we are now done with the user interface. There's this blocks button right here. You can't really see it, but you are going to click on that. And we are going to get to work. What you are going to have to do is, I'm going to start off with doing button one. You're going to do when button one dot click do, and you are going to go to, and then you are going to go to the variables, and you're going to do set, and then we don't have any variables yet. We're going to have to make a variable. You're going to hit Installize Global Variables. You just have to tab on Variables. Drag out Installize Global Variable. And you're going to go to Math. And you're going to drag this out. We are going to keep this at 0 because this is going to be number. And I'm going to change the name to F1 for Factor 1. This is going to be our first factor. I'm going to change F1 to something because we're going to hit the button key. So I'm going to set this to something. I am going to set it to, I'm going to set it to what we clicked. So if we were going to set it to just one, when we click the one button, it would print out one. But when we click the one button twice, it would still print out one. It would not print out 11. In order to fix that, we're going to have to do some math. You're going to drag out the plus, and then you're going to drag out the times. So inside the times, you are going to put the git command and you're going to get put in git global f1 and you're going to go to math. You're going to drag out this and you are going to put into 10 and then you are and then we're going to do plus all button one text. How you access that is just click button one and you drag this out and you're going to change that to button one text. So this is saying we're going to set factor 1 to factor 1 times 10 plus 1 because we're setting it to button 1 text. So we are going to duplicate this for each button. Keep in mind we are not duplicating it for the operator buttons. So before I forget, we are going to need it to display the key that you press so you know which key that you Press. All you're going to have to do to that is you're going to click on the output and you're going to drag out set the text to and you're going to drag that right inside there. And we are going to set this to our variable F1 for factor 1. So now we are going to do that for each number key. Okay, as you can see, we have so many X's. That's because we have more than one thing to do when you click one key. So in order to change this, I'm just going to start. We're going to hit change that to button 0 and this to button 0. You're going to go do this accordingly. So we're going to have 0, 1, and then I'm going to do button 2 and button 2. So you're just going to keep doing that. Okay, so that's the end of part 1. Make sure you see me in part 2. Two. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please leave a like on this video and share your feedback with it inside the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Before I forget to save this, all you're gonna have to do is go go to my projects. It's up here, and you're gonna click and you're gonna click on save project right over here. And to connect an uh, Android device, you're going to get the App Inventor 2 app on your Android device. And uh, you're going to start it up. You're going to click scan QR code. And there's a connect thing right up there. 
you are gonna click the connect thing and you are gonna click AI companion that's it should pop down just like the safe thing did but you also can't see the AI companion once you click that it should give you a ball code scan the ball code and it should open it up and then when you're done make sure you close the app make sure you completely close the app so make sure you subscribe leave a like and uh, and if you have any feedback write something down in the comment section below i will see you guys next time bye